I wanted to build a battery tab welder because I've got an e-bike the uh, the existing battery is of a homemade thing covered in insulating tape it's got no battery management system in it and it's already showing uh, signs of um, terminal decline so I need to build another and I'd like to do the old laptop battery salvage thing um, and I want um, a tab welder to, to build a new battery so it all starts with an old microwave oven and this one was a skip rescue all that we want from the microwave oven is this transformer but there is a real serious danger here the purpose of this transformer in the microwave is to generate very high voltages and store them in this capacitor these voltages can be around 7000 volts and that will definitely kill a person if you uh, if you receive that shock so um, you have to be really cautious if you don't know exactly what you're doing don't do it but basically you have to make sure that that capacitor is fully discharged uh, most of them have a bleed resistor wired across them so that they will self discharge in a matter of minutes um, but that's not um, a safe assumption to make they've been known to fail so you have to discharge that capacitor uh, before you go um, go anywhere near salvaging the component you need well here's the transformer removed the bottom coil is the uh, the primary and it connects to the mains through that black and white wire there the middle coil the small one with the red insulation is a sense coil and that needs to go as does the top coil which is covered in insulation that's the secondary coil and it's that that generates the 7000 volts removing those unwanted coils is a messy and tedious business and it's um, easy to damage the primary coil which would mean game over but I used a Dremel, a hacksaw, um, an aluminium drift and a hammer and eventually everything was gone it's then necessary to remove these um, packs of laminations which are called shunts they serve to bleed energy from the transformer and if you leave them in the spot welder doesn't work and also um, you get alarming buzzing noises from your circuit breakers so take those out this is what you want to be seeing completely empty not a scratch on the primary coil and you're ready to wind your new secondary nearly two turns of 40 square millimeter copper wire this is PVC insulated battery welding cable this really completes the high power electronics or electrics um, it's just a step down transformer which turns 220 volts into about one and a half to two volts um, but at very high currents which is what you need for a spot welder the enclosure is made from wood thin ply and some battens there screwed or glued I'll probably take the screws out at some point and paint it So here's a system overview of the spot welder. Um, let's start with the transformer. Um, the secondary coil provides very high current, um, two volts or thereabouts, um, and that does the spot welding. But you need to be very careful. It's a brute. Something can get white hot and melt in a second. So it needs to be controlled very carefully. So it's switched through a solid state relay um, via a MOSFET. Um, which is driven by an Arduino Pro Mini. So the Arduino um, sends this pin high, measures the time, sends it low again, and this is the mechanism of controlling the beast. Um, that's essentially it. In fact, the program to control that is tiny. The bulk of the program is concerned with driving the user interface, which is a 16 by 2 LCD and a rotary encoder. So you can turn the rotary encoder knob left and right to um, uh, and you can press press it in to implement a user interface there that controls the various parameters delays and firing times of the spot welder and then finally there's a fire button um, which is sensed by the Pro Mini and that's what turns the uh, when it that's what starts the firing sequence which um, does the spot weld so it's pretty straightforward. This is the physical implementation of the electronics. It's on a breadboard, which is fine. The thing is physically stable and it's not subject to environmental concerns. And it gives me the flexibility to easily extend or modify it should I need to. But you can see the Arduino Pro Mini there. 
the potentiometer is to adjust the backlight on the LCD there's the MOSFET and of course over on the right hand side is the SSR which turns mains on and off to the spot welding transformer the 5 volt power supply for the Arduino is just a repackaged phone charger put in this box here's the packaging of the system in the box on the right hand side there are the mains components the 5 volt power supply, the SSR which is shrink wrapped in some plastic coating and the main switch on the left hand side there's the LCD um, the rotary encoder and the breadboard the mains transformer is earthed and all of the mains tabs anything metal that's connected to the mains is completely covered in shrink wrap so turn the system on, wait for it to boot there are three numbers um, P1 is the duration of the first pulse DLY is the delay between the first and second pulses and P2 is the duration of the third pulse and all of these in milliseconds turning the rotary encoder initially moves you you see that chevron moving between the various sessions this tells you which one you'll alter if you press the rotary encoder in when you press it in the chevron turns to an asterisk and this tells you that this will be the value you're adjusting and then it's clockwise to increase it and anti-clockwise to decrease it and press the button again to set the value but these values are temporary if you power cycle the machine you'll get the uh, what you might call the factory settings re-emerge again if you want to set values and overwrite the factory settings you can do that too once you've got the value you want you just do a long press and when you let go it says saving factory settings and now when you power cycle it we set the delay to 214 we'll see that 214 is a value that comes up however I want to stay with 200 for the delay so I'll just put that back in the factory settings when you're ready to make a weld you just press the weld button which is off screen but um, it's there the red thing there and when you press that you see welding and you hear the transformer buzz for a little while well let's get to know the bitey end of this beast here are the two front teeth those copper rods are six millimeters wide they're angled inwards so that they can get close together and they're filed down so that there's a small point of contact you want both of those things for a small good quality weld you can also see the brass blocks which allow the um, high current wires to come in and they transmit that current through to the rods So let's have a go with it then. Uh, we've got the, the right numbers as default set. So first we'll do a piece of strip. I've learned that if you um if you if you do it on wood, you burn the wood and it stinks. Um, so I put it on a piece of metal, this is aluminium. And let's overlap the strips as you would if you wanted to weld them together it's a bit cumbersome I mean I haven't finished engineering this gantry system I'm calling this method organic engineering you you lash it together you see the ways in which it doesn't work and what you'd ideally want in use and then you um, then you make it do the thing you've now understood needs doing so I'll put you down there so you can see exactly what's going on uh, we'll turn the system on we're on the overlap all that's required is a firm downward pressure and that's it we'll have a little look see what we've got that's a good weld you can see the um, the two dots there it's a very nice weld very nice indeed so that's strip to strip and lastly a bit of battery action as you can see I've been on here before let's just weld this battery this tab to this battery and see how that goes pressing down firmly making sure both contacts are on spot 
Now that was a little bit alarming, wasn't it? Fire um, was the insulation, the plastic insulation catching fire. The cell itself is not really warm. So I don't know how you fix that, but anyway, that is, that's welded on, I can't get that off. Well, you can get them off with pliers, but um, that would be a finished finished product. I might put two or even three pairs of spot welds on there. But that's the spot welder. Um, finished in that it's fully functional. I can see how I might want to update it, though. Firstly, I'll probably paint it. Secondly, I'll probably glue it and get rid of most of these screws. Just leave the top and the back open for access and maintenance. Um, I might add new modes to this. One mode might be so that it steps more quickly because if you want to go from 10 milliseconds to you know a second and a half, that's a lot of twiddling. Um, so I might program in a fast mode. Maybe you should press it down and hold it. I don't know. I don't know. Another mode might be you put it in a mode where it's welding for as long as you've got this button pressed. So rather than doing the timing thing, it's just you hold that until you think it's done. Another thing I might do is um, arrange, rearrange this so it can be reconfigured to put these contacts in opposition to each other so that it can weld things in a, a different configuration. And then another thing I do is characterize it, see, um, see what it can do. You know, can it weld nails? Can it weld X to Y? Can it be used for Z? That kind of thing. And that will be the subject of another video which will be coming shortly. Um, other things I'll do, I'll tighten these up. This is not bolted down at the moment, it's just resting there. Um, and I might add some insulation inside, and if the thing gets hot with repeated welding, then I'll add a fan um, and a um, temperature sensor in there so that the fan manages the temperature and prevents it from working if it gets too hot. Okay, that's it. It's been a long journey, but I used to have a scrap microwave oven, and now I've got a working spot welder. It's been a 12 minute video for you, which I hope you've liked. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Um, so, maybe see you next time.